Hello, everybody, and welcome to Silent Podcast, the place of everything but silent. Back again for episode three of the Big Brother US Reviews. Yes, we are three episodes into this. We talked about 24. We talked about 23. Now we're going to talk about All Stars 2, everyone's favorite season. Um, I might say. <laughs> um, and I got two amazing uh, codes here. Uh, the, uh, you know, I, like I've said, I've been using this uh, series to collab with other content creators, so it's pretty dope. Um, so first of all, I have Kamisha from Kamisha's Reviews. Kamisha, how are you doing today? I am awesome. I'm so happy to be here. Hello, hello. All right. And also I have Chantel from Reality Realness and RHAP. Chantel, how are you doing? I'm doing amazing. I, I, I'm i very excited to talk about the season because I actually have not talked about it that much. And I, I think I kind of pushed it aside and out of my distant memory, out of my close memory. So uh, it'll be nice to Same. revisit it to have like <laughs> other feelings resurface. So I'm happy to be here. Long forgotten, very deep. <laughs> listen this has been like uh, a season i've avoided personally um because it hurt my feelings on so many levels right uh we were begging for another all-star season forever we finally get one and oh my god it flopped so hard so you know this should be an interesting one to rank overall um but i think we should get started guys why not um yeah. so First and foremost, what's our initial thoughts on this season? Just just baseline off the top of your mind. It's been like a year or two since we've seen this. How do we feel about it? They were robbed. Day <laughs> and Bay, period. That's true. 100%, 100%. they were robbed. I, I mean, just, just my opinion, I think I screamed like the last three months. I mean, it just, it was horrible. It was horrible. It was like... It, it was like it was, it was preparing us for Taylor. I really do feel like it literally was preparing us for what we saw and how we handled it. Um, it was almost like for me when I watched Davon that she had this one last hurrah in Bay, and they just didn't get the opportunity. And I really stand in that. For me, I think the preseason hype was better than the whole season itself. And in the end, it was the last episode, the finale, that provided us anything that was good and delicious and like, you know, Big Brother-esque. And so for me, it was just a big disappointment. I was so excited for the season and it just for me, flopped on levels. I mean, I, let, let's get into that, right? Because as you said, the preseason was more hype than a regular season, which is crazy. Um, like, uh, first of all, we didn't even know what the cast was going to be. Uh, now, to give them credit, this was around COVID. This is the first time this was mm -hmm. going on. We didn't even know we were getting a season. And they were like, all right, Survivors do winners at war. Let's give us the All-Stars too. And, you're right, and uh, we went with it. And we're like, all right, this is awesome. Uh, there was rumors of like, Dan coming back, that was never happening. Uh, there was like rumors of like, uh, oh, I mean, for some reason, Amber from 16. There was a whole lot of people mm -hmm. that was rumored for this season. But um, this is actually the first time that they were really implementing the diversity initiative um, for Big Brother specifically. And God, they did not have a lot of black people to pick from. So it got <laughs> really, really messy, um, which is why we were, I'm not going to say stuck with, because that's a rude word, but like we were left with like a David Alexander from for example, or, uh, you know, no shade to Kevin. I, you know, Kevin should have been brought back regardless because of his performance, but Kevin and so on and so forth, you know? So it, it was definitely what a weird time to be a big brother fan. Like you just don't know who's going to be in the season, but ultimately, you know, we got the cast who we did. Um, you know, there was a whole lot of pre gaming going mm -hmm. on, like rumors and allegations. I remember someone said Nicole F was like ratting on Derek and uh, Dan and all these people. It was crazy. Chantel, wasn't it? It was, it was so wild. And, and that was really interesting though, to be like, Oh, who's talking with who and who's ratting out the other person who's talking to whom. And, and, and like it was just it, I, it that was kind of interesting to me just to be like kind of involved in this preseason chatter and i think it only really can happen with an all-star season um because people know or get did you get the call did you get the call and so not that i i enjoy pre pre-gaming because i do think that it actually completely stifles any actual gameplay when people get on the show but 
what compared to what we end up getting as a season, I thought the pre pre gaming and the preseason hype was a lot more entertaining with the speculation. And even, um, I think you probably also did one, but that was my first introduction into Rob as a podcast. I did like Janelle, we did kind of a breakdown when we yeah. heard that she would be part of the season. So it was, it was an interesting time for me. Um, but <laughs> as a season as a whole, it, yeah, it, it wasn't great. <laughs> Yeah, they they uh they had me do Memphis that time. That was the time you we got Memphis. Our hats. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy what did time. You say? I don't remember. <laughs> I had to go back. Um, but Kamisha, so I, out of curiosity, Kamisha, how many seasons of Big Brother are you familiar with? Um, before I, I ask this next question, um, I think the very first one it tells you my oh. age. So it's been okay. a, it's, I think I've watched every season. I mean, I can't remember everything verbatim. You have to remind me or whatever. But yeah, I, I watched the very first one. And so I've been watching it ever since. and getting mad at them ever since. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> Same pattern. <laughs> so with that being said, because you've been here since the beginning, right? How was this cast for you? Because it's like, I mean, I've gone back and watched every season, right? But it's like... There's a, like I don't know if All Stars is like the appropriate name. I I think some people have called it Some Stars, you know. And <laughs> wow. it's I feel like it's appropriate a little bit. But like Keisha, for example, was like an alternate, and I mean obviously didn't do the best this season, but like she was an alternate. Like, how do you feel? Uh, it was a forgettable. People were uh, okay. Unfortunately, there were some that were, for, uh, that were forgettable. I would say fans of David. When you mentioned David, I was like, oh my god, I forgot David was there. <laughs> and with that being said, David, it was a very sad time to see him on the screen. That was one of the first times I FK for a black person to be kicked out of the house so mm. much. Literally where I said every week, please vote David out. If you see this, I'm sorry. It's still it's still recorded. It's still up there. I did say that. <laughs> so, I mean, I just <laughs> disappointed in the cast. I love that Bay and Dave was there, even though I don't think that... Um, Davon is like a competitor. She never has been for me. I always thought she had a great social game and she was very intelligent and very astute individual, but not good in competition. So I always felt like it was like, okay, with Bay and her both in there and they were coming together, which they did immediately. I felt like, okay, it's, it's going to be something. Something's going to happen. So I just felt like I was disappointed that nothing happened that I wanted to. It actually went completely worse. It went backward. It was just a mess. Uh, we, we lead into the whole nightmare after Christmas mess. It, it just... I, I was just disappointed and felt like I was cheated. I felt like Chantel. I just felt like my mouth was ready. Like, you know, you're about to eat this juicy steak. It's ready <laughs> off the grill. And then you just taste it as hard as a breaker. There's no seasoning. We have no seasoning. <laughs> no seasoning. <laughs> 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 I mean, oh my God! I remember uh, you said Christmas after Halloween. Like people called her Halloween. Why was Christmas <laughs> Labor here? Day. First of all, Labor Day. <laughs> like, a nightmare. Like, why, was, why was she here? Like, I, I mean, all right. So allegedly, Paul and Josh and a couple other people, Casey, but like those specific people were supposed to be on here. But people like Josh, allegedly. No one, no one called this for fact. Allegedly, people like Casey and Josh got COVID. Um, but I mean, you know, why? First of all, again, I can't. I'm not looking forward to having to review Big Brother 19. But why are there three representatives from BB 19 for this season? That's that's the first of all, the first issue. Why are all these people getting ass back? Because 19 is a horrible season. Um, why is 21 after the crap show that was like Nicole Anthony? I get it. I get also the diverse thing but why is david here like like there are so many other options that i feel like could have been put in these spots and they just like i don't know i feel like they just gave up last second you know i i'm just yeah i agree with you i don't know why they made the decisions that they end up making in the end i mean it must be availability it must be obviously um who they think the fans want i i think that the the producers and the casting doesn't really understand what the fans actually want in the show. And I think that they do what they want. And I think they believe that we all love Paul and that's why they were bringing him back over and over and over and over again. Um, I think that because of the fact that Josh and Casey are now on the challenge MTV, they think that people want to see them. And really we're like, why did you bring them onto MTV's The Challenge? Like, we don't want to see them. But I think that they have a false idea as to what we want. And so 
I think that that's mm-hmm. why those people got getting cast. I think David just said yes. Um, you know, maybe he was like, you know, a few down the list of the, the potential ass that he was available. You know, they, they went, I feel like they did an all-star seasons because they didn't have to go through any of the medical testing and stuff like that. Like it could be a more of a contained season and they wouldn't have to do all this normal protocols. They would have to do with a brand new cast. And so I think that that's why they went the all-stars route in general during COVID times. But I, I just think that they don't really know what their fans want to see and they cast accordingly. I'm going to say, I feel like that David, people feel like he said he needed a second chance after what happened before. And I'm just, it's like a, almost like, okay. I feel sorry. Let's give him another opportunity, which is horrible because he didn't do well in anything he did, like at all. This man like won something in the dark, which I do believe Big Brother helped him. I swear to God. <laughs> that whole thing he won, I do not think that was a win. I think someone was like, turn your, turn your, turn your, you know, I swear. Like, we couldn't see anything, remember? That, I went over there like a hundred times. You could not see anything. He just was lost in space. Did not think he won that. So I just think that he was like a, I hate to say, I hate to use this terminology, but token, and I'm not meaning it in a way, mm-hmm. even though she fits. You know, twist that a little bit too. But I mean, seriously, like, <laughs> this, oh my God. <laughs> I just, I just, you get you know what I'm, yeah, you know what I'm saying. He was just yeah, like, yeah. well, there's probably like, you know, 22 black people to choose from to bring onto the show when they want to increase the diversity, and so I think that he was helping them be able to do that. I do. I mean, so he helped them, but he, was, he didn't win anything. So the, in their mind, also it might be, I hate to be funny, well, we know he won't win anything. Remember, this is before he was woke. So it's like, okay, we know he's not going to win anything, so let's go ahead and put him in the house. We won't be in danger as my black boy. That's true. Put him there. I mean, here's here's my thing. It's like, if you're trying to fit, like, another black male, first of all, I know, so I think Swaggy said he did get an invite, but then he just, like, turned it down. But it's like, um, I mean, this is a hot take. I mean, if you're going to give someone another chance, bring Jody, who you guys, like, completely robbed, first of all. Um, Lewine, not the best player, but, I mean... (laughs) Special powers, people still talk about that to this day. Right. I know um, who Luan and Luan is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, 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 like there's back, Marvin, there's people. Take Marvin you know. too. <laughs> Marcellus. Um, Howard. <laughs> Howard. Marcellus. I'm, well, Marcellus was probably like, absolutely not. But they probably all said no. <laughs> to be honest, yeah. to be fair, what if they asked people and they just said no? Because Big Brother does not have a uh, reputation for us. So can you imagine asking any of us to come back if you've done it in the past? I probably yeah. would have said no too. Like no, I don't, so I don't want a, re- a repeat of this, what happened before. Like why would I put myself through all that anguish for nothing? So, no, I feel but. that. <laughs> all right, so let's go into some specifics real quick. Um, so first of all, how do we feel about production? Um, so mm. I'm, I'm gonna just be honest. This was probably the most bitter I've been towards production in, in my life, and mm-hmm. there's a whole slew of reasons. But the number one reason, this is the first and only I time, to say one. I to say one to is when <laughs> they erased a day in Big Brother history because of a wall yeller. So mm. when the wall yeller happened, they cut feeds for 24 hours. The house guests were not allowed to speak to what happened. I mean, obviously, thank God we have Dave Vine who gave us a YouTube video after the season and told us what happened. But I will never forgive them for that because they just completely were like, all right. You know what? One person ruined it for thousands of you guys. You guys are not allowed to watch feeds. It's crazy because in that 24 hours, we find out that Nicole Franzel gets exposed. Um, we find out that Day and, and David, uh, like, they have their apology thing. And there was a whole fallout. And we we just did not get that. And I was so salty. Um, I still will ever forever be salty and don't trust production with live feeds anymore. But I mean, even with that, the show didn't really show what was going on correctly. Uh, there was just a lot being left out. But I don't know how you feel, Kamisha, about uh, production. they were protecting Karen, but in that in that production, they were just protecting her. I mean, the, the wall yeller, I, whatever. Um, as far as Nicole, that was their darling. Nothing, that water could drop the top of the nasal sounding voice of Nicole. So, to me, it was always about keeping her up high and keeping us, us down low. But that's was trash. I got completely pissed with the whole Tyler thing. I am still mm-hmm. mad about that. You got out of your little closet queue that you watch them on camera to come in there and be the president and say, no, 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 you can't do this. And then tell, I know you told Christmas this, to convince him to stay. 
I know you did. Lady, he was not there anymore. And I'll leave it there. <laughs> How about you, Chantel? Um, well, I mean, I one of the reasons why I like in reality TV is the realness element to it. It's seeing people react in real situations. Maybe I don't like the situation, but I want to see I want to see the truth about people. And so with the, having the feed shut down for 24 hours that we're not getting to see the real part of the show, like that is frustrating for me. And I've watched the live scenes since season two. Like it's part of my viewing experience. And so for them to shut it down because they want to protect their their players, I, I think it's just a little bit frustrating um, especially because we are watching reality TV, but it's not, it's, it's also, it's all of a sudden not real anymore. And so I definitely was irritated by that, but my ultimate like irritation from the season, it started from day one, the very, very first episode, it was a live move in live competitions. And I believe um, Memphis went maybe first or whatever, and he had to bounce, de- like t- jump on oh, all those different stars, yeah, right? And yeah. then Cody was going after him, and he could still see which one of these stars are moving. So he was yeah. able to just zip through and become the first head of household. And I think, and then after that, they were kind of resetting it and like making them all, um, you know, still be wouldn't be able to tell what the perfect path was. But Cody was able to win that first head of household and he set up the entire season for what i think was a big downfall for like what <laughs> anything any hope come on girl for being in a good season <laughs> come on you better tell it you better tell it 100 percent. everything is perfect Yes, yes, I agree 100%. Yes. Uh, oh, and even also with like that whole, um, the the maze that the, that they had to kind of do to to qualify to get to the next right. stage, like the, the the women's one was a little bit more difficult and it was like, it was, I was oh like, what? Mm-hmm. Why are you trying to make a man win the first head of household? I was just so frustrated. And then it was Cody. I was like, oh my God, God this is the worst. So yeah. I completely forgot we about that. It was like it was men against bad. men, men, women, everything. It was, I remember that. You just brought that back to me the competitions were trash it was not made for it, it just wasn't made for any of the women to win and not unless they were like the christmas horrible nightmare it's like she was the only <laughs> one i don't even get that uh, right now with her, with her bad foot anyway i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> with her bad foot all right so <laughs> yeah the, um my god like you guys both uh just sparked so much stuff in my mind like um God, we're we're gonna talk about that whole Tyler thing in a second. Um, but uh, yeah, like that first challenge, that, that was a precedent where I'm just like, I don't know how I feel about this. You know, like um, you know, the first episode gave me a lot of false hope. First of all, mm-hmm. um, I was like, the challenges uh, is not even, but you know what? It's Big Brother. It's all right. They gave us a live move in. We never got this before. That's I'm like, cool. I'll put up with it. You know, we got night one feeds. We never got that before. I'm like, all right, cool, but. You know, just to see, like, how things shaped out, you know, just, like, first of all, I mean, I'm not going to blame production for the pregame. Obviously, Cody did what he did. (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) Right. I'm not going to give too much (laughs) leg room. But, um, (laughs) you know, the the, the cast also lacked a lot of comments. We're going to get to a lot of all that in a second. (laughs) But, um, yeah, those are are some good points. But, yeah. you know, slowly but surely, we're going to talk about like uh, a lot of the big peds in this cast. And I think Kamisha landed on the first one where, you know, I'm just going to get in and out with this guy. Uh, Tyler Crispin was coming in here like the golden boy of Big Brother. Um, he was like um, uh, one of the Big Brother greats. I don't think anyone could deny that. But this season, uh, well, well, first of all, coming into the season, allegedly he did not want to come in uh, mm-hmm. until Angela was like, Go play. Like, what are you doing? And he was supposed to allegedly, I'm going to be using that word a lot. Allegedly, he had like a whole thing going on with Christmas and Josh and Casey, and they were going to come in and be something. And he looked around and like, there was no Casey, there was no Josh, and he was confused, you know? So, uh, you know, we come in, he's making a whole lot of deals, he's playing a game. I think the fandom was really out on Tyler the moment, the week where 
he went to Bay and Day. He already had feelings that he wanted to quit. Um, and, you know, he kind of used the BLM movement as like, you know, right. you guys are here for something stronger. Uh, he was in the DR for a long time. And allegedly, uh, they said that they would take his pay away if he tried to quit. So he ended up not leaving. And, you know, it, what a mess all around. You know, uh, like if he stayed in, first of all, and just play the game. He would have took Enzo from Cody and probably could have flipped this whole game around. But he kind of like gave up. You know, he missed Angela and all this stuff, which is fine. Mm-hmm. But the stuff with Bailey and in, in, uh, Davon was just like out of nowhere. And like I remember, at least at the time, it was just like a really big issue. So, um, I mean, how did you guys feel about all that? I know Kimmy, she spoke about it a little bit already, but like, how did you guys feel um, about all that? I was angry. I'm like, I'm just. I was completely angry because I was, I was watching the live feed like religiously, and I can just remember when I saw, because I was watching it live. When I saw her go downstairs and talk to you know Bay, and she tell him what was going on. I was like, wait a minute, is there a hail mary? Because at the time I had given up and like, okay, they're going home. What one was going home or whatever it was, and I was like, just pissed. And then they're talking. I was like, Taylor, Tyler, I hope you're not BSing us with this crap. And I just like, oh, it's just not gonna happen. And then. When he was gone for that long time, I knew it instantly. I said, because you would, it was like, okay, I know that he wanted to go home because his girlfriend, cool, whatever. The way I looked at it is husband. The girl get to both stay, because I swear, I still believe this. If they would have went the other way, one of them would have got HOH, in my opinion. I, I just feel it in my gut. I feel like that. And so I feel like that it's like the producers knew almost the close some girls got to get HOH, they was. They were so happy to make sure that didn't happen. Tyler was a golden boy, just like Nicole and many others, and they did not want to see us rise to the top. It was very frustrating to watch as a black blogger. First of all, black blogger has never seen, first of all, doing this type of show anyway, and I'm doing it. And I'm frustrated because it's like, at this moment, and it was so hot in the streets with, with black lives, everything's all black, and black, they black, you know. And and you just, we were, I, we were so heightened to this that watching that, it's like, okay, I know he's just talking crap, talking about I'm doing it for the movement. Da, da, da. I was like, bump it. I don't care. As long as they get to stay. I was mad at him for using that because it's such a heavy situation. But I just wanted the girls to stay. I just wanted to see them get the opportunities that I felt like this was the last thing. Because I knew they weren't going to do it anymore after this. I didn't have to even watch a blog or knew it. I knew they'd be done because I have been done. I'm sorry. I want to get to but that's really how I, I know you And you know, it, it was tough, at least uh, for me, because it's like, I think out of uh, there was obviously a whole lot of pre existing like beefs and stuff coming in here. I think Bay and Day more than anybody, like their their specific beefs were in the house. You got Tyler and Bailey had that whole blow up in, mm-hmm. in 20. And then um, you got Davon with Nicole with their whole situation. And then right. it's kind of interesting because both of these people made promises not to do this stuff again. And it's the game. I get it. Mm-hmm. You got to lie. You got to cut people. That's fine. But. Ty- the the issue with Tyler's move, I mean Nicole, we'll get to her. I don't, it's not as hot, but specifically with Tyler's situation, it's like uh, you don't bring up certain things that you know are close to someone's heart, and then go back on them just because of convenience. You get what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. um, that was not the best thing. I was really disappointed in Tyler this season. Very disappointed. Well, I think what ends up happening is, you know, obviously uh, the world is experiencing the BLM like the movement in general. And, you know, these people are all quite young and they're all really into their brand and their social media and like how they're being represented in the world. And I think that he probably got some wind that maybe he wasn't maybe looked at as an ally or somebody that was for, you know, the people. And so I think that he kind of got wrapped up in like wanting to make sure that he looked like a good guy like a good person that he was supportive of these two black women and i think that he kind of slightly used racist strategy unfortunately and i think that that kind of was got him like eating up at him a little bit and like making him not really make the right decisions but i think that he was trying to come across as doing the right thing and being an ally and being a good person and it kind of got kind of misconstrued with playing the game and so it became part of his strategy and it was just it, it it didn't sit well with me at all yeah i mean i'll even go on the record i don't even think anyone really thinks tyler is a racist person mm-hmm. that's what it's just like but, but I that agree. was it was just definitely like out of left field and you know not gonna sit well i don't you know i think he's done i, I mean I'm, I'm not gonna lie it's kind of 
tough to watch someone like Tyler who coming in was he was claiming at least that he was like such a huge super fan after 20 i've kind of seen him like out on big brother in general um in all stars if that didn't cement anything <laughs> like like he's completely done with big brother so it's like um you know what a weird uh turn of events for a tyler crispin but what are you going to do there um but anyway i mean we could talk about another person while we're here at the subject uh you know bailey uh in Davon, I mean, you know, they're both their own players, but Bailey and Davon specifically, huge part of the season. Um, you know, like I didn't think I would ever see Bailey back into uh, a show like this. So I was glad she was given the opportunity. Davon, that was such a lock. I mean, no one thought Davon wouldn't be in here. Um, so right. just to see we don't really get a lot of like all black alliances. This is technically um pre cookout. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Hey, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. so you know it, like how was the impact for you guys with uh the whole black girl magic because i i personally i was like i don't stand many people in big brother like at all i was considered a stand uh this season like oh that was crazy uh but how'd y'all feel about it it's it, oh i'm sorry go ahead, go ahead oh I, 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 either way <laughs> I, I was just gonna say i, I really I really really loved it but i was really hoping that they would have worked with janelle like as janelle was so on their side and so wanted to fight with them and so wanted like not with them but like for them and like have them be on a side together and like go against the whole big alliance and they weren't able to see what was going on because of kind of like the bull that nicole franzel was kind of feeding them and like it's it was just frustrating because i'm like oh my god they have they, they really do i think had the opportunity to go really far and deep into this game if they didn't allow themselves to be kind of kind of snowed by franzel and like there you know um davon's past relationship with franzel and franzel kind of saying that like no things are different now like i'm here for you we're working together i would never do that to you again and so having that past history with nicole really didn't allow them in my opinion to be able to see clearly and i just i really wanted them to work with janelle make that division like, go against the the cody side of things and 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 really make it to like the final six and like really have a good run in this game so i i thought that it was great to see them on the show but i really just wish that they did what i wanted them to do because they would have done so much better in the game <laughs> Oh, and, and and Christmas wouldn't have been able to like have that whole moment with them if, if they had just signed mm -hmm. with Chanel at the beginning. Like Christmas would have been like out of there. <laughs> right you, you know uh like like first of all i thought bailey was having like the best game at some of the early weeks of this game like her social game was so good everybody wanted her incorporated and things I, I think even um the committee at one point or another even like thought like why are we not bringing like bailey and dave on to this i forget who was the one that was like nah don't do it um but they were like really in the house structure for a while you know so it's like uh christmas it like the, the, here's the issue with Bailey and Davon, which really sucks. And I don't blame them. But it's like, it feels like both of their uh, experiences with Big Brother, they always are set up really well to do well for a very long time. And it just takes that one tick from somebody in the house to, like, set them off, right? Uh, Bailey's, obviously, Situation 20, very specific. Don't follow her. And then Christmas, I don't know what's wrong with Christmas here. Like, like... I can't stand her and I have a whole rant I want to do about her. But oh. it's like they wanted to work with her and they were just like, she was just so off of them. She was like, oh, you guys are going to work together. Uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. We'll get into her in a second. But then even with Dave Vaughn, you know, her first season, all right, you, I guess you can sort of call it her fault because it's like Audrey was like coming after her and that, that was strictly game. But I don't blame her for 18. She was set up really well and then she was harassed actually, first of all, by Frank. Not her fault. I would and anyone who would react that way in that situation like you know i'm not gonna fault them and then here too uh with christmas uh with friends all it's just like it feels like they as well as a lot of other black people throughout the uh previous years of big brother before after the season were really just like fighting like this whole different game that no one really could see or understand unless you were black. And I think this season specifically really magnify that to the point where now we do have like six to five black people on big brother seasons. Now, like that was like 
ludicrous. Like I would never see that ever again. Like I actually, I'm working on a video. I did a whole outline of like how many black people played and like, that was like unheard of. Like the max would be like four and that's like barely, you know what I'm saying? So it's just crazy this season to finally see like, this is like the tipping point. Like it took 22 seasons for you guys really to finally get what the issue is. You get what I'm saying? So I have a lot of love and respect for Bailey and Davon specifically for that Davon speech, but like they were really fighting on the front lines for something that was like way bigger than the game. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, it's just crazy. It's crazy. How do you feel Kamisha? Okay. Uh, you, yeah. Both touched on so many, <laughs> Um, hot topics. Let me see. Okay. I want to, was first in the front of my brain, I want to respond to what you said about, um, the Christmas situation and the girls not, I'm not going to get too deep into it, but, um, you know, just the fact that they, they thought was trying to, that tick, they thought was trying to so hard not to do that for so many reasons that Taylor said before and what we've all said, not to blow up and get mad and CBS or whoever, was running things knew what they were doing when you placed the situation it's like you you know if you're a producer your production you you know you know you can't make things happen because it's a reality show it's not a scripted show but a reality show can be somewhat like a scripted show you place people in certain places and and, and put things in their head because see production is always the one that's whispering in your ear and same thing on your shoulder that we just don't know about so let things know what's going you know then all of a sudden you're mixing it up but Davon and Bay, I want to go with what uh, Chanel was saying. I 100% agree. I really wish they would have did something like The Leftovers. Whoever was left over that wasn't a part of the committee or whatever else is going on, or The Liars, Nicole, um, <laughs> that they could have they could have got everything together and could have took over. And I really, I really believe, even though the other one might have been a little bit weak or whatever, they would have been still together um, a strong force that nobody would have been expecting to happen. That would have really changed the game. And I think mm-hmm. it would have been like a flip of the house, I think. It's so good. It would have been so awesome. I kept saying, please get together with Janelle. Uh, Janelle Kaser. Yes. Then bringing in Kevin, like Kevin yes. and, and like what's, um who else was on that side? Was the other Nicole um, there too, right? The other Nicole? She was. Uh, yeah, Anthony, she, she ruined I'm going to bring her up in a second too. But yeah, she's a hot <laughs> miss.com. But what I'm saying is you can just break, <laughs> just break her on so she won't, you know, you control her so she don't act like Oh, Keisha, you know, like, it, it, I mean, yeah. she might have been out already because she's out first, but like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but those are two we at first. We sacrifice those two. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> they're still part of the whole thing for the for the illusion of we are bigger than y'all. You know? So, oh my god, yeah, wouldn't it have been so like... amazing if it was Kevin and Keisha that were on the first episode? That was the first um, uh, eviction, right? So what yeah, if right. Kevin had gone? If Kevin had left. I think we would have maybe gotten a good yeah. season. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I, I'm telling you, a lot of things would have been different. Oh, man, there's some things that could have been different. I just, I still feel like that they didn't get the opportunity. If they would have got the opportunity and they would have lost, I would have been like, cool. They just didn't make it. I just felt like it was too many things. And I would, I'm going to get into that, too, as far as Cody. Cody, what I feel like is the number one head of the snake that wants to take down those two women. He was the main one. If anybody said anything about saving them, doing anything, no, 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 no. He would be the, I mean, he'd be the main one. Hyping up to make sure that them girls did not go past go. He was the uh uh-uh. uh. I'm you know, I still to this day get angry about that. I feel like he just did not mm. want to see those girls win. I don't know what it was. I mean, I know he does his little thing now and it's whatever, but I just I, I just never understood what was it about those you didn't want to see them win. What was it? Was the production saying you do that? Because the, even the HOH, which I can't remember the exact name of the HOH, where they're switching, switching back and forth, the whole target for that HOH, and that was the last one they played actually. Um, was those two girls. Every time whoever played, make sure you get them out. The whole house. I'm like, what is this? I mean, my theory, oh. and I mean, I know they spoke about it in the house, but uh, last time Davon played, her and his brother did not have a good relationship. Mm. So maybe he was afraid or something that like that was a pre-existing factor. Who knows? Um, but, mm, mess. Well, I, I mean, maybe he also knew that if 
if they ended up going and siding with Janelle, that they would have a bit of more of a problem. So that's probably why they didn't really want to work with them. Kind of, they created that that separate alliance to make them feel safe, so they wouldn't feel like they needed to go and find something outside of the group that they that they created. And I think it was just to be able to kind of keep control of them, that they wouldn't go off and and start something that they couldn't control. So I think he was just scared of the fact that they were really kind of in the middle and they held a lot of power being especially two two women that are very capable of winning things capable mm -hmm. of influence sway and um i think that they just didn't want to give them that opportunity to to get a, a better grip on the game we really just needed that like leftovers moment in the season <laughs> and i mean <sighs> i you you can start seeing easy like early trinklings of it because uh before enzo got into like the cool kids club like uh he was hanging out with like the older people too a lot like you know Memphis had Memphis and Enzo were like, oh no, I'm hip, I'm cool. I can hang with the young kids too. But like ultimately, like outside of Enzo, because they brought I'm him there because they thought he could be I mean that, <laughs> that's how they felt though. Like, like, you know, uh I remember Janelle Kaser, Enzo, Keisha Memphis, they were all in the room and they were like, Oh, look, we're the older people. Uh 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 and then Enzo's like, Oh, I don't want to hang with the geezers. I think he said something like that. I forget. Um, but you know. I don't know. It's just like, how cool would it have been? Oh. Just, uh, well, first of all, Janelle, Kaser, I understand. They did not play the best Big Brother, first of all. Uh, they completely misplayed the first VIP room. Like, they should have had one of them do it. I get it. But how awesome would it have been to see them last, or at least get one HOH? Like, Janelle got so close so many times. Mm -hmm. Get one HOH and just see a whole house flip over. Like, that would have been beautiful, you know? But what, what would have been beautiful is because preseason, I was I was hoping that Danny and Janelle were going to work together and then they would have brought in the Baileys because Bailey and, and Janelle were really pretty close coming in. And obviously Devon would have been in that group. And like, I thought it was going to be like a powerhouse of like women running the season. Like, I thought it was that's really what I was like hoping for. Like, oh, it's going to be amazing. And then with that whole Janelle that Danny I seemed to have wanting to steal Janelle's crown and be the new queen of Big Brother, that it just allowed her to completely make the season flop. And Janelle just like really just wants to play Big Brother. She she loves the game. She loves the going back and forth. She loves the competitions. She's not really from what I've seen into kind of like petty like girl stuff like not wanting to work with other women. Like it doesn't. That's never really what I've seen of Janelle. And so I was so disappointed in Danny for not actually wanting to work with Janelle because I do think preseason they kind of said like, hey, we'll look out for each other. Let's work together. And then getting into the house, Danny was a little bit all, all up in Cody's grill and pretty <laughs> anti-Janelle. And so that yeah. was one of my bigger disappointments of the season as well. You know, like, like Franzel, I get it. It's because, um, you know, she has a relationship with Cody. Uh, you know, she's, um, I mean, no shade. She's usually the one, like, signing with the guy. So, like, that was expected. Danny was very confusing because it's like, I feel like she had to pick a side, first of all. Because it seemed that Janelle and Nicole had an issue because this like i forget how many years before but nicole and rachel were on the amazing race and they were beefing mm -hmm. and janelle's always gonna side with rachel before franz also like that that's probably Wait, why wouldn't anybody <laughs> yeah <Sorry>. exactly <laughs> but, was just so sad to watch oh my God. yeah i'm like i'm like what Horrible. happened danny like like you were like you know you love janelle you're such a fan and then like this was jealousy like times two like like it just came out of nowhere and i don't know what happened to danny like like uh she was just a confusing person. She was talking about how she didn't like Tyler. Now she you're like weird. Tyler's bestie. Uh, you, you know, like like she was just I don't know. She was backwards logic a lot. Like I mean, even her and uh, Devon were getting close for a little bit, but like she was never like actively like looking out right to, like right and you know. So it was it was strange. It was weird. It was like Devon was on there for friendship, not for competition. Okay. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Is this Facebook? <laughs> um oh, by the way anyone watching make sure do not tag day and all this she made a tweet recently she's like stop uh showing me this old stuff i've healed i moved on do not oh, wow. send this there. let her leave she's cool she does not care about this anymore do not but anyway so <laughs> let's move on 
<laughs> I'm sorry, I wasn't even ready for that. Wow. Yeah, she, <laughs> do she not said, tag me, something I did do before. not tag me okay. in BB trauma videos. I love y'all, but I healed and moved on. I do not need reminders of yesteryear. I respect it. Um, so mm-hmm. do not tag her in this. But um, I guess we can start talking about uh, a little bit of the power structure within this house. I'm not big, I'm too big of a fan of this alliance, but we can talk about the committee members for a little bit, um, starting with Halloween, Labor Day, Christmas, whatever you want to call her. Um, what what was going on with Christmas this season, y'all? Because first of all, no one was expecting Christmas to be here. Um, eventually got on, like the fandom actually started feeling Christmas for a little bit because we all thought she was working with the girls. She was funny in the DR. And then out of nowhere, she just flipped and was like such a villain again. But like not the guy, the villain that you want on this show. Like, like she was calling people out for personal game information and assuming that the black that girls are going to work together. Self. That was like, her. what happened here, y'all? But like, that was, was her, her, honey. That was her. That was who mm-hmm. she was. That whole facade that we saw for the few weeks that we saw it. And also, she wanted to be a girl's girl so bad to me. And I, and there's nothing wrong with not being a girl's girl. Let me say that, first of all. But um, she saw Devon and... Ba- ba- she, there was something about them that she envied. I always saw her like looking at her in an eerily way, like why creepy. Like she was envy, envious of them, and she was hating because I can remember there was a time when the committee was talking about, as you stated earlier, bringing them on. She wasn't having that. A lot of her game movement, when especially with them in the house, was to target them so badly. When she found out that, you know. I thought you was my friend. Who talked to you? Babe, she got so mad. Oh, that's the habit. I don't appreciate sure we getting that in a minute. But she, it's like, it was something it was something weird with those two girls. I felt like she wanted them out of the house. She wanted to be them. She could not. She could not understand the black girl magic. Maybe, I don't know what it was. But it was a whole nightmare. And that's who she was. That's who she, it was her real self. It wasn't thinking yeah. about that. Nothing. I mean, just like seeing her as a player. I mean, Okay, like the the thing with Christmas, she gets long and lasts longs in games because she's one of the, if not the, like ultimate shield, a big brother that she is ride or die for your alliance. She will go down for the alliance. She does not care about her own game. Um, but just like the way <laughs> she just came at people sideways, just really like, I don't know, it kind of ticked me off. And I mean, even with Memphis too, like um, I remember he had this huge weird obsession with like David this season. He hated David. He wanted David going, talk mm-hmm. to them like a child. It was just like, it's, it's funny that these two are kind of like, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're married or something. Now. Yeah, they know. are. They're married. Mess. But, um, you know, it's just like. Pregnant. I don't know. Sorry. I don't follow their lives anymore. <laughs> I, I'm going to be honest. I, I, I don't believe that for sure. <laughs> Like but, their baby. Oh no. You, you know, just like seeing these two, it just like um I mean Memphis, I understand Christmas, I'll never understand why she was cast for the season. But it's like this I think these two specifically are a big reason why uh Big Brother has also made a huge change because it's like I mean, we just saw Kyle, so I'm, I'm, you know, I can't give him too much credit. But it's like I'm, I'm just so tired of just seeing like this prejudice type of like strategy and gameplay that's based off of nothing. Like you make something up in your mind and you run with it like it's fact. I don't understand it, but it was very weird behavior. Well, I'm wondering now that we know that. Well, we think that there might have been a kiss between Memphis and Christmas in the game, and then we know now that they're in a relationship and and married. And I'm wondering if the way that she was treating um, Bailey and Devon was to like look cool in front of the guy that she's interested in. And mm. so, you know, that's the way that he kind of interacts with people mm-hmm. of color. Um, so maybe this is, this will make him endeared to her or like her a little mm, bit more. And so point, I, I'm just wondering if that's kind of why she was acting that way, because like she thought it made her look cool in the eyes of the guy that she's pursuing. <laughs> Not cool. You know what I mean? You know what like, I mean? Like, so, like, like, you know, like well, you showing know out I mean. for your man. Like, hey, yeah, baby, I get it. Like, it's like high school. She, yes. I 100% agree. Girl, you hitting it right on the nail. Yes. <laughs> she is. There's, like, uh, my boyfriend's back. I'm like, girl, calm down. I, yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm going to tell this person off because my boyfriend will think that I'm cool. Or like, I'm like, <laughs> hey, I'm like, I know, I'm right? Friend, like, right? And you're just like, mm. <laughs> some 80s after school special TV show. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my cast. <laughs> I hurt my foot. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, 
<laughs> before we before we get into the final three no you're fine uh before we get into the final three and um i mean no shade i don't really have much to say about like ian or keisha and nicole so i'm sorry if anyone's looking for that um so there are two people before we get into the final three where i have a lot to say about mm. these three um kevin and david mm, so mm, i mean mm. obviously the you know they're on good terms now like david's good with the girls i don't know what kevin's status is with them but i don't think it's anything bad um i don't know if you guys heard those davon videos but they were heavy content right so to yeah, hear well. and kind of look back and see how like kevin moved in david moved, but specifically kevin how did you guys feel about them because it's like all right First of all, Kevin, I mean, I mean, no shade, didn't really claim his blackness until it was like convenient in some places, um, you know, exposed. I will never forget him exposing that whole plan to date to Danny. We'll never forget that. That blew my mind. Uh, and then, I mean, obviously, David, not the best strategic player, if not one of the worst. Um, but I mean, what is the ultimate climate around these two? How do we feel about them now that it's like two years removed from the season? How do we like feel about their gameplay uh, overall? Gameplay? Oh, or gameplay. They, they, they everything. Had Sorry. They had gameplay. They had they had gameplay. gameplay? <laughs> um. Well, okay. Kevin. Kevin was a, one of, another big disappointment for me because he had, I think, the opportunity to build that other side and like be really strong in like having a force to go against the committee. But he instead just wanted to sour Nicole Anthony's thoughts about Janelle and wasn't even re relaying true facts, like true, like what was really going on he had a really misconstrued perception of what was happening and relaying it to Nic nicole anthony who was just eating it all up and so it was really frustrating to be the side that he decided to take i, I was just like and it didn't it didn't even benefit his game necessarily and so i didn't even understand why he was so anti janelle when the other side wasn't didn't care for him at all like they didn't want to be working with him they he wasn't part of an alliance and so i thought his gameplay was terrible i thought that he was one of the major contributors to ruining i think a, a potentially okay season um i think that him his contribution really really tanked um the possibility of having uh you know some strategy and some back and forth in in this particular game uh and david alexander i think the issue with him is that he doesn't really understand or know big brother and he's not a strategic player at all in general so like i don't know if he plays like you know mafia or plays secret eight or werewolf or any of these other games that are like you know social strategy but he doesn't seem to have a mind for big brother and so putting him in the house watching him be like oh what's the veto do like stuff like that i'm like i can't even i can't even deal with it because you're not going to make a decision that i'm going to be okay with so he also kind of ruined the season as well for the fact that he wasn't able to contribute to the strategy to help put all the people on the other side in a better position so he's a flop i'm sorry david i you you i you kind of redeemed yourself a little bit in the challenge usa i i i think you did a little bit better there but on all stars i thought flop both were flops for me <laughs> i'll never forget uh him doing the fake crying bit when uh he used the secret power on himself he was like who did this who would do this <laughs> I mean, that's kind and of start funny. crying <laughs> but he I thought he was doing that, something <laughs> he, he, he struggled so badly poor thing they, they would just oh, struggle the whole season he was just like oh po po tank tank uh first of all shout out to anybody in the chat that's from uh my people i shared this everywhere so I hope everybody's coming to your chat because this is an awesome live. You guys have got some good content. I look forward to um, seeing more. So I, I really um, want to see. I love getting to know other content creators. I just want to say that really quick. And thank you for having me on here. But I want to say uh, David to me and uh, Kevin are like, when you are in school and you have to pick your teams, and there's normally like one or two people at the end that you don't want to pick and the teacher mm -hmm. forces you to pick them on your team, those two are it. I just feel like yeah. it's, it really wasn't for them. I didn't see it for them, and they should have not, you know, they should have said no. But they was an added addition, too. I didn't even know Kim was black. Sorry to say this. I'm Whoever who watches this, I didn't know you were black. I was like, oh, he's black? I literally questioned that. Like, wait, what? Like, how are you black this whole time? And I don't know that. But anyway, mm. that's how I feel about that. That's another pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, I mean, there you go. With that. I, I was so sad because Kevin was, like, such a big force um, back in his original season. So, just seeing him in this one, I was just like, ah, Kevin. So disappointed. Anyway, um, we don't have much time left. So, I, you know, we, we can start talking about some of the final things. Uh, specifically with uh, three big game players this season. So, first of all, we got Nicole Franzel, third place. Um, Nicole, well, as much flack well-deserved flack that she gets i feel like ultimately she is one of the better players in big brother do i like nicole <laughs> absolutely not <laughs> the way i yes, feel she, she knows how to get to the end she knows absolutely. how to get to the end so i'm going to give her her respect and how is that, that? There, now and there's what i was about to get into she sells women out all three seasons she's done that it is not a good look whatsoever. Look, she, that's not all that she's done. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh. Keep it PC as possible. Go as for it. As much as Taylor was dragged for, you know, the HOH room, yes. Nicole has had many, a few HOH cut or two where some things happened. I remember I used to watch the, the uh, after the, the after dark, whatever they showed that what 24 hours of Dallas watching my brother and baby, Nicole was doing her thing. It wasn't just winning with the. I'm just saying. I want to make sure it's out there for the kids that mm-hmm. watch this. Okay, Nicole, what's up, Mills? So her gameplay, I, I, I never not respected it because of what she did. You get to your win. Um, I just feel like if a black woman does it, it's frowned upon. It's just annoying. But um, she's yeah. also annoying towards her voice. That's all I got. <laughs> I, I mean, mean the, we ahead, did get a couple of tries, a couple of guys. And I, was I was just like, about to say yeah. that. <laughs> you do it. I'm not trying to slut shame or whatever, but like, I'm, I'm not either. You saw how I went there. I was like around the sucker on the corner. <laughs> <laughs> but I like, I thought that that line was so good though. And like, I don't think that I think it was Blaylee that said it, um, that she was trying to be mean about it. Like, I think she was just like, you know, a couple tries, a couple guys. Right. <laughs> but it was, it, it, it hit. I, it I, I, I definitely like that uh, line. <laughs> Nicole, Hold on, are, we gonna, are we gonna have a moment to talk about the night before Christmas and how she came after the two black girl magic and that whole situation? Can we not? I will go for it. I just, I just wanted to just really quick dig into that really fast. Yeah. Now, that was like a moment in history that a lot of us will not forget. I do believe that the internet was on fire when that happened. Because the way I looked at it was Davon was trying so hard to hold it in. She was trying really, really hard. And when I saw Christmas sitting there looking at the camera directly with her eyes bugged out, and then you saw her at the bar, and then they were behind her, and she just looked so evil. I'm sorry. I was like, bro, is she like, is, do we need the exorcist to come in here? <laughs> like, what is happening? Like, the way she was coming at this, she was like, I'm going to make you, I'm going to make, I'm going to get a rise out of you no matter what. And so when David went, Dave Bomb finally went off, I was like, you know what? Go off. Go off. Yes. Yes. She looks like she's possessed. <laughs> then he says, I, <laughs> so what, she's like, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. She just didn't even look. And those girls was trying so hard. I remember that scene like it was yesterday. When they walked to the back, they were talking each other down from the ledge. Like, look, let's not, they're whispering to each other. They were doing it. And she was plotting from that moment. Oh, no, mama. It's gonna be over. We're gonna do this. We're gonna rumble, and so it, to me, I was disappointed in everybody else who took so long. Who who was it who jumped in to stop it? I can't remember. Oh God! And I was like surprised. It was Ian, Cody. is it? Who was it? Was it Cody? Mm-hmm. He was frustrated with the argument. No, Tyler. Tyler. Tyler didn't like it. Tyler did not like it. And I and that's one of the moments because Taylor died and he really irritated me the whole season. But that's one of the moments I felt like he was genuinely like, no, this is not. I don't, he didn't. He didn't care what was what. He didn't like it the way Crystal was acting, and the thing about it, she don't understand behind the scenes. Those guys dragged her. That thought she was weird. That they, when she would come around the corner, oh, she's coming, she's coming. He, she thought she was so in with them. So you saw the women out, and they didn't even like you. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> I remember a lot of people were like, oh, this doesn't feel right. But you know what? It doesn't have anything to do with me. I'm going to leave it alone. (laughs) That was the equivalent of like uh, the Daniel Nicole situation with Taylor and like Mm. no one like stepping in, you know, and but this time a leftovers isn't made, you know, so like that, you know, bad um, mess. Um, So I also wanted to ask uh, Enzo. Is he so like all right? There's mixed 
like feelings about him right some people feel like enzo is like one of the best players never to win like uh yeah Who, now you're so, just saying that there's I'm, I'm, nobody I'm not, that says that there's i'm not nobody there's you, that says that. you haven't been watching you you have to watch youtube videos i'm not going to name drop these channels go watch the count counts <laughs> but there's channels out there listing him in their top 10s for best never to win because of no. his social powers and his placement and it's like okay I'm not going to deny Enzo is a great social player, but he has absolutely no win equity. He doesn't really ever take shots both of his seasons. He's made it deep by willing to, like, thank you. He's willing (laughs) to take people (laughs) who are going to beat him to the end. And I don't know how to feel about that. I mean, even, I mean, no shade. He was on a challenge, got to the end, and then quit. Like, like, there's something about Enzo. I can't, yo. I can't do it, yo. Yeah, I like, I feel know. like he's there for a check at this That's point. Like, so I don't bad. think he actually cares about winning these games, you know? So it's like, <sighs> what's the climb on Enzo? How do we feel about him as a game player? I agree with the statement he that he just wants to stay in the game as long as possible. That's his strategy. I don't think that he is trying to get to the end and win. I think he's just trying to get to the end. And for me, that, yeah, it's, he's great at getting to final three sure like he's he's not um a threat everybody's willing to take him there he's likable but he gets there because nobody thinks no everybody knows that they could beat him and that is i don't think that that means that you are a good player because people are taking there because they think that you suck you know what i mean so um i think that he's great at getting close to the end for not being a great player but i don't think that there's a ever a chance in any cast that he will be able to win he won't set himself up he doesn't yeah. play the game like he doesn't surround himself with people that he could beat in the end he doesn't he doesn't think ahead he just kind of plays for let me get taken further along anybody but do, me i guess it's a strategy but do we think he was actually considering cutting cody for nicole that's the real question i don't think he would i think he thought mm-hmm. about it yeah I mean, anyone will think about it if you get to the end. But are you going to actually do it is the real question. I don't think you would do it, though, personally. Yeah. Yeah. (sighs) Enzo, disappointment. All right. And then lastly, we got Cody. Um, So, I mean, I have a follow-up question that's just like Enzo. How do we feel about Enzo? Because some people consider him... Cody. uh, Yeah. Some people consider him one of the best um but uh obviously pre-gaming is a very huge factor and you know it's tough he is the only person to have a perfect win no votes never been nominated uh and you know he got all the votes to win so i mean unanimous win that's impressive but it's like how much credit do you want to give him because it's like this is still the same guy who took Derek to the end and lost to him uh this is still the same guy who kind of needed like a lot of his friends pre-gaming wise just to do really well in the game so I mean how do we feel about Cody as a player and as a winner because I personally don't think there's a right or wrong answer but there's some people (laughs) who are like nah there's a specific answer it's yes (laughs) or no (laughs) so I mean, Cody did what he had to. Cody did what he had to do. I, I, you know, we we look. Cody did some stuff that I did not like his methods, but he grinded and got where he got to go. At the end of the day, I am a, a person that's going to talk about the game. If you win the game, props to you. I'm not going to knock it because you did win the game. You did win. You, you accomplished a goal that nobody else was able to do. So I have to give him that. Do I think that he did a lot of shady stuff that I thought was just really kind of really, really shady and all this he just like his brother, or whatever? Yeah. But I felt like he did what he had to do. It is what it is. How about you, Chantal? Oh, Cody. <laughs> um yes, I, I agree with you know, the fact that he won, like you definitely got some props in my book for being able to do what the rest of the players were unable to do. Uh, I personally don't enjoy watching his game or his seasons. I didn't enjoy season 16 either. Um, now, I've played social strategy games and, and long-form Big Brother games, and it is a really good strategy to have a big dominating alliance and having kind of like smaller alliances within, and then you're kind of at the nucleus. That is a really viable strategy to use, and I've used that strategy personally to win a season before. So I, I get people using that strategy but for as a viewer i don't want to watch it because it's just it's not it's not interesting and it's not uh, it's not entertaining for me so 
I think that he is using the new school strategy of Big Brother to gain those big alliances and be in, in the in the nucleus, the core of it, and he used it effectively. So I do think that he is a good Big Brother player, but I don't think that he's an entertaining Big Brother player. I don't think that he takes the path of least resistance, which is definitely a viable strategy because it got him to, to win, um, but it's just not it's not enjoyable as for a television show. Yeah, I mean, also, we got to say, I mean, he is one of three, I believe, someone quote me if I'm wrong, to make the final two twice, uh, that being with Dan and Paul. Um, And, you know, to your comment about him using new school strategy, I I think you argumentally say him and Derek created new school strategy, you know, so, uh, you know, that's Mm -hmm. his forte and it was expected. Um, I've never seen Cody or Derek, but specifically Cody, because he's played twice really face a lot of adversity i don't really mm-hmm. know how they react like if i'm going off of his 16 there was a lot of time during 16 where he was ready to be the next paulie califiore and blow stuff up and if you look at paulie he was in a great spot but he was just like a cody without a Derek, and he was about to blow his whole game up i remember he did that a lot in 16 he was a very big hot-headed person so um I don't know what Cody looks like if he's uh, has another really dominant player in there ready to like blow his spot up. Uh, I don't know how how good he is or isn't. You know, so it, it feels like CBS might want to invite him back. I don't know. Um, I know that he's definitely not against a return because, like, what he has a Big Brother podcast. Uh, he said that you know he will play again in his exit interviews. If I remember, um, it would just need to be in a couple years. Maybe we see Cody for a third time, and uh, if we do, I want to see someone come after him, like like someone directly. Please like, nominated first, like please. Yeah, that would be delicious. Yeah, it would be yummy. I want to see. <laughs> I want to see him fight. Yes, um, but there you go. So I guess I have some closing questions before we uh, get rid of everything, guys. Um, so ultimately, we're two years removed. Um, what is our overall feelings about the season? How does it stand against the rest? Is this in the top half? Is this in the bottom half? Or is it right in the middle? For me, it's a it's a bottom half. Um, I think for the fact that I had just so much hope and excitement <laughs> for it, and and that it just it it just failed on many levels for me. Um, we didn't talk about it, but I mentioned it when we first started. the 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 best moment was when Cody cut Nicole in the final three on finale night. So I, what I want, how many days I watch like 99 days. And on the 99th day, I get the best moment of the season. Uh, it's a, it can't be a top tier season here. So I would put it at the bottom half for the fact that all st- the first all stars was so epic. In my opinion, I enjoyed it so much. Like it could be because I was younger. It could be as yeah, at the same age as the people when all my favorites were playing. No, it's just better. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. But like, I was like really living with them. Like I was on that journey with them. Like, you know, these were my favorites really. And it was a really good season in, in my opinion. So I was comparing it to that. It's just, that's a top tier season. And I just think it's yeah. Bottom, like bottom, bottom eight, probably. Yeah, how, how bottom for me too. Up? Bottom for me. Bottom, bottom. I don't have much to say about it because even at the time, it was very frustrating to watch. It was not enjoyable. It's bottom feeders for me. All right, and you know what? I agree with y'all. It's down there for sure. Uh, the only ones I can see down there with is like uh, nine, nine, fifteen. Uh, just it's it's so it's isn't yeah, it? it's just boring. It's it's so it's boring. I don't like you know the highs is the first two episodes where there's a lot of optimism the lows is the rest of the season (laughs) well i will say davon's veto that was a great that was a great moment love that i love that one but yeah not a lot of highs in the season so there you go um okay and lastly (laughs) i mean this is an all-star season so i don't know how likely it is but if we had a chance to see any of these people play again again um, is, I mean, is there anybody who you want to see return from All Stars too? I, I mean, I personally don't. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Um, I might have maybe one, but uh, how do you guys feel? Bailey for me, and that's it. Yeah, I could see. I could. I could have Bailey play again, and if Devona wanted to play again, I would. I've always would want to watch her play. Yeah. Um, 
I could still in a world want to see if Janelle and Kayser could do something, but I think that Nicole, <laughs> that new school, sorry, new school, it just won't play with them. And so I just don't think it will be enjoyable, but I just want to see them have a little bit of a run. You know what I mean? Like I want to see their side get a, a couple wins, but I don't think that actually will happen. Actually will happen. Other than that, I don't care to see anybody play for sure. Mm-mm. Yeah, I'm gonna just say Bailey, but I don't think Bailey <laughs> wants to come back. No, um, she's good. She's got a baby. She's a mom she now. Nice yeah. life. Like, she's good. There is one. Okay. I want to see Kaser. I would see K. Kaser is the only pre-jury person that has gotten pre-jury three times that I would it's like to see come back. <laughs> and I will only want to see him with no Janelle. He has never played Big no, Brother Janelle, without that's Janelle. True. That's fine. That's so, fine. I would do that yeah. for sure. Janelle's played without Kaser. I haven't seen Kaser play without Janelle. That's about it. Everyone else, you guys are retired. It's been fun. Thank you for <laughs> your service. Um, but there you have it, guys. That's, that's our uh, little review of Big Brother All Stars, I know not the best season to review, but you know what? We got to talk about all of them. So there yeah. you go. Well, um, is twenty one next? <laughs> so- <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't like it's not. Good. Yeah, oh, not not the best. You know, um, New School Survivor. That, listen, that's a Survivor. That's why I said let's do New School first, and then get through all the yuck first, and then, and then um, that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. There you have it, but you know, you guys made this such a fun little review, so I appreciate both of you guys for coming. So it was fun, um, yes, yes. So make sure yeah, you guys we're living those, trauma uh, together. <laughs> 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 make sure you guys support both of them. Um, we're going to just start a plug real quick. So Kamisha, we've been trying to collab for so long. Thank you so much for coming, and hopefully, I see you it a lot a more. Um, where can people find you? And what are you getting into, Kamisha? Kamisha Reviews, um, type it in, Google it. It'll come up with all my Apple Podcasts, Spotify, um, YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitch. I believe I've covered everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, find me, follow me. Love you. Okay. And uh, Chantel, where can people find you? Um, well, definitely on Instagram at ShanFranFran has all my different socials of all the thousands of things that I do. Um, and on YouTube, I have a channel, Reality Realness with three S's. Subscribe there, ring that bell. I go live all the time talking about many, many, many different shows. So let's hang out. And like uh, usual, you can find me at 8 Ball Bangers on all socials. Um, you can find me on a bunch of podcasts here at Silent Podcast. Uh, tomorrow, not today, tomorrow, me and Abby are going to talk about the next four episodes of these horrible couples on Love is Blind. So that should be oh, a fun boy. time. <laughs> um, but there you have it. Um, until next time, when we're going to talk about 21, uh, this has been a good one. Have a good one. Bye. <laughs> all right. Yeah, have a happy Halloween, guys. Be safe. Oh.